Continuing the part two of this week's Parsha, or Kufale, or portion, that's known as Ferajoch in the Amharic and Shoftim in the Hebrew, we will continue with landmarks, the important matter of landmarks, because this portion sets out for the Beta Israel a constitution, a basic societal structure for the Beta Israel in the land of promise. Landmarks. The Beta Israel were not to move their countrymen's landmarks to set up that were set up by previous generations in the property that they were allotted in the land. They were not to remove the landmarks, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 14. There are rules for witnesses that's also contained in this week's Parsha or Sabbatical Torah portion. And these are rules for witnesses. An Israelite could be found guilty of any offense only on the testimony of two or three witnesses, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 15. If one person gave false testimony against another, then the two parties were to appear before Hashem, before Ha Elohim, Baruch Hu, the true God, and the priests or magistrates, judges. And the judges, Farajoch or Shoftim, were to make a thorough and a complete investigation. And if the magistrates found the person to have testified falsely, then they were to do to the witness as the witness schemed and conspired to do to the other, the falsely accused person or persons, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19, verses 16 to verse 19. Also in this Torah portion, there are rules for war. Rules for war were given to the Beta Israel that they were to observe when they entered into the land which Yahweh Eloheinu had given to the Beta Israel. Before the Beta Israel joined battle or a battle, the priest was to tell the troops not to fear, for Ha Elohim, the true God, would accompany them to do battle against their enemy. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 2 to verse 4. Then the officials, the alikoch, the officers, were to ask the troop whether anyone had built a new house but not dedicated it, planted a vineyard but never harvested it, paid the bride price for a wife but not yet married her or consummated the marriage, or become afraid or disheartened, and all of these they were to send back to their homes and not to engage in the upcoming battle, according to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 5 to 8. When the Beta Israel approached a town to attack it, they were instructed that they were to offer it the town that was being sieged and under attack, terms of shalom, terms of salam. And if the town surrendered, then all the people of the town were to serve the Beta Israel as forced labor or as consigned labor, according to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 10 to verse 11. But if the town did not surrender, then the Beta Israel were to lay siege to the town. And when Ha Elohim, the true God, granted victory, kill all of its men and take as the booty the woman, the children, the livestock, and everything else in the town, according to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 12 to verse 14. Those were the rules for towns that lay very far from the Beta Israel settlements. But the towns of the nations in the land, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, the Beta Israel were to kill everyone, lest they lead the Beta Israel into doing all the abhorrent, the abominable things and practices that those nations had done for their false gods, according to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 15 to verse 18. When the Beta Israel besieged a city for a long time, 
they could eat the fruit of the city's trees, but they were not to cut down any trees that could yield food, according to Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 19 to verse 20. Lastly, but not leastly, there's an interesting matter of what happens when a corpse, an unaccounted for corpse, is found in the community or any of the surrounding and neighboring environs that belong to the Beta Israel. If in the land, the promised land, someone slain was found lying in the open and the slayer could not be identified or determined, then the Shemagalewoch and the Farajoch or the elders and the magistrates were to measure the distance from the corpse to the nearby towns, according to Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 1 to 2. The Shemagalewoch or the elders of the town nearest to the corpse were to take a heifer that had never been worked or yoked down to an ever-flowing wadi and break its neck according to Deuteronomy chapter 21, verses 3 to 4. The priests were to come forward. All of the Shemagaliwoch, the elders, were to wash their hands over the heifer whose neck was broken. And the elders were to declare that their hands did not 